Welcome to the scurrychurchofchrist.org. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge. Please don't let this happen to you. Feel free to contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org uh, where you can visit us and any Bible question that you may have, we will do our best to answer. We are so glad you decided to visit us. To it, I'd like you turn to Revelation chapter five. Uh, Revelation chapter five. We are dealing with Revelation chapter five, verse eight. Uh, Revelation chapter fourteen and verse two. And Revelation chapter fifteen and verse two. We've already dealt with uh, chapter fourteen and verse two and chapter fifteen and verse two. Um, we're dealing with, uh, of course, we're discussing musical instruments. We've been doing that. Um, and some say, well, since instruments are mentioned in Revelation 5, 8, Revelation 14, 2, Revelation 15, 2, uh, since it's mentioned along with singing, it, it is allowed in the New Testament worship of the church. And so we're looking at that uh, tonight, and we looked at that the other two nights. Now, remember, let's get right at it. We know from the what we learned, uh, Revelation, we're talking about this symbolic language. And, and of course, there's some uh, some language, there's some literal parts of Revelation. Not everything is not imagery, but uh, there is a lot of imagery, uh, symbolic language, figurative language. We looked at last week, uh, the simile, there's similes, there's metaphors. Uh, that's the type of language it is. And so Revelation 5, 8, 14, 2, and 15, 2, uh, that's part of that. Uh, that's figurative language. It's imagery, symbolic language. And we have to search the scriptures to find out what's the picture. What is the picture being? What does God want us to see? He's painting a picture. So we're not to take those hops literally. Now I'm going to read these scriptures again. Uh, the New Testament scripture concerning singing, and we take this literally. Now remember the hops in Revelation 5, 8, Revelation 14, 2, and Revelation 15, 2, that, that's not, that's not literal. that's figurative, symbolic imagery, that's a picture he wants us to see. Uh, but uh, notice the other scriptures, and I'm going to read these quickly, Colossians 3, 16, uh, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Okay, so we looked at there, you know, you're not going to see any uh, singing with alone when it re relates to God's worship. There's no singing accompanied with musical instruments. That's in the Old Covenant. That's the Old Covenant. We study that. So these are New Testament scriptures concerning worshiping God as in singing, worshiping God. In Acts 16, 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. There you go again. Uh, Ephesians 5, 19, speaking, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing and making melody uh, in your hearts to the Lord. That's singing. Uh, you see that there. Uh, James 5, 13 is any among you in trouble? Let him let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Okay. Uh, you see 1 Corinthians 14, 15. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. There it is again. You just we just see singing. Uh, Matthew 26 and verse 30. Here's an example. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. That's Matthew chapter 26 and verse 30. Romans 15, 9. Moreover, the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing the praises of your name. There we go again. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 12. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. Now, another example, again, is in Acts 16 and verse 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to uh, them. And so we have all these scriptures in the new covenant. This is, remember, all scriptures given by inspiration of God. This is what God requires. In John 24, we worship God in spirit and in truth, not just spirit, spirit and truth. 
in Colossians 3.17, we must have authority when we worship God. And so as we look at these scriptures, we this is the authority that God, we have authority to sing this way. Uh, when I, if I go to the old covenant, I'm going to find there from the old covenant scriptures. And we know we're not, we don't live over the, we don't live under the old covenant anymore. We study that. We learn from that Romans 15, 4. Those things written for time, written for our learning. And so if I want to find choirs and the musical instruments, the drums, etc., I will see that in the old covenant. I will not see that uh, in the new covenant. It's not there. So we see here, what I just read is not symbolic. It's not figurative. It's not metaphoric. It's it's. He says it literally, this is what he requires us to do. These, like Ephesians 5, 19, Colossians 3, 16, those are direct. Those are direct commands. And so remember, Revelation 5, 8, Revelation 14, 2, and Revelation 15, 2, that's, that's symbolic language. It's figurative language, uh, metaphoric language. God is painting its imagery. God, what picture does God require us to see? So now let's go to... Revelation 15, Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. We already studied uh, chapter, four, uh, chapter 14 and verse 2 and chapter 15 and verse 2. We've, we've done that in the previous lessons. Now, this is the last one. Uh, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 8. Okay. So, what's the picture here? Now, watch. I'm going to read verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, having each one a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Okay? And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy art thou to take the book and to break its seals, for thou was slain and didst purchase for God with thy blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And thou hast made them to be kingdom, to be a kingdom and priest to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Now, I want someone to get, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna discuss it right now, but we're going to hit it in a minute. Uh, first Peter chapter two and verse five, I need uh, Revelation chapter one and verse six, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 and 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. Watch. So that's 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse uh, 9. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6. And Revelation chapter, or rather 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. Okay. So I know just like we studied the other passages, I can't take... Uh, I can't take these things literally. Like, let's go to Revelation chapter 14 quickly in verse 2. We study that just quickly. I can't, I, the context doesn't allow me to take it literally. I, I know it's figurative language. Uh, he says in verse 2, I heard a voice from heaven like the sound of the many waters and like the sound of a loud thunder. And the voice which I heard was like the sound of harpers playing on their harps. So remember, that's, that's a simile, okay? Like, it's not like, a, you know, I heard a sound like uh, the sound of a harp is playing on the harp. He didn't, that wasn't a literal, it wasn't a literal harp. He heard the sound like, that's a, a simile. We talked about that last week. And then notice what he also said. He, he Remember, he says he heard the sound, Okay, and we're going to look at this in verse 3, and they sang a new song. You will see that. We notice that in the other lessons, there are songs of victory. In chapter 15 and verse 2, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass and with fire, and those who had come off victorious from the beast and from his image and from the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, holding harps of God. And they sang the song of Moses. That's a song of victory. We studied that. So now they're holding harps. Now he's seeing this image. John is seeing this, this picture, this, this image, and he's seeing, you know, they're holding harps of God. Okay. I can't take this literally. I have to look at 
the picture and what does the picture mean? And so I know that in verse three, and they sang the song of Moses, the bond servant of God and the song of the lamb saying, so I know that's, that's, that's a victory song because I go back to Egypt and the song of Moses is the song they sung when they escaped, when God freed them from uh, Egyptian bondage when they crossed the Red Sea. And after they crossed, they sung the song of victory, but God did it. They did. God uh, freed them. God gave them victory. And they're singing praises to God. And so the, the harp is just a, uh, it's symbolic. It symbolizes the beautiful song of, it's, it's a beautiful uh, song that is sung. That's what it does. It, it's a song of victory. You see, now watch. So let's go back. I just wanted to go over those quickly to Revelation chapter five. And I'm going to read, because I want us to see that this is not to be taken literally. So verse one, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a book written inside and on the back sealed up with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaim, see, with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to break the seals? And no one in heaven or on earth and under the earth was able to open the book or look into it. And I began to weep greatly because this is John talking. John is seeing this. Remember, John is on the island of Patmos. He's seeing these things. And he says, John said, I began to weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the book or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah the root of David has overcome so as to open the book as its seven seals. And I saw between the throne, the four living creatures. See, that's not, you, that's not, we're not talking about literal. This, this is not, this, this is symbolic, figurative language. And the elders, the elders of the lamb standing as, as slain, having seven heads. See, right now, I'm not, right now I know that, okay, what is that? That's, that's, that's figurative language. It's apocalyptic language, symbolic. I can't take this literally. I can't, I just can't. And seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Now I have to search the scriptures to find out what, what is the meaning of this picture here? If I take it literally, I'm going to, it's going, I, I won't be able to grasp the meaning. I, it, it's just not going to work. I have, it's just, it has to be taken figurative. Doesn't, I have no choice. And, it, and then he says, and he came and took it out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So this is Jesus. Jesus is the one that's going to make this happen. He's qualified to do this. You see, no one could do it but Jesus Christ. He's our king. And he says, and when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, having each one a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So that's what he saw. That's what he saw. He see, he's seeing this, this image, this picture, this, it's this vision, he's seeing it. But notice he says, notice towards the end of verse eight, I'm gonna read that again. And when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, having each one a heart, uh, a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So I, the golden bowls, are they literally going to be in the heavenly realm? John is seeing this. This is a picture that God is allowing him to see. He's seeing what's happening in, 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 from the heavenly realm. So if I take the the hops literally, then think about that. Having each one a harp and golden bowls full of incense. Okay. What's what's the point about the gold? He said, which are the prayers of the saints? Okay. So the golden bowls are the prayers of the saints. So again, I'm saying this because I, I don't People will say, well, that's this is the fact that we see harps in Revelation means that we can disregard all the verses that we just read. We can disregard all the verses and, 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 and Re Revelation allows us to uh, worship God along with musical instruments. 
Well, with all the respect, no, 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 they don't. Okay, this is uh, in Colossians three sixteen, Acts twenty, Acts sixteen twenty five, Ephesians five nineteen, James five thirteen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 15, Matthew 26, 30, Romans 15, 9, and Hebrews 2, 12. It's not figurative language. You see, we see the commandments and we see the examples. Okay? Here he wants, this is, this is figurative language. And so remember, you, you see, but it's very interesting you get into uh, the harps. He saw... Uh, he, he said, having each, have, each, each, having each one harp of a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So, you know, you, you, they have, they have, you see him holding these harps. That's what and I, I got to go back. To, I, we gotta, I got to go back to, I have to go back to 14 and verse 2. Here we go again. He said, and I, I, he said, and I heard a voice from heaven, like the sound of many waters, like the sound of, of a loud thunder. And the voice which I heard was like the sound of a harpist playing on their harps. He didn't say, he said, was like the sound, was like the sound. He didn't, didn't I mean, think about that. In 15.2, he says, and I saw as it were a seal of glass mixed with fire and those who had come off victorious, see, they, they were victorious. They did not bow down to the beast. Victorious from the beast and from the image and from the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, holding harps of God. That's to be there. These harps, you know, this is a, a it's like a beautiful sound of a song that's being sung. And, and he's painting this picture. And, you know, I'm just going to say, if I'm an artist, this is. If I'm painting a picture, the picture is meaning something. So I'm going to use things that we are familiar with. Doesn't mean I take these things literally, but I'm going to, what is the picture? The, pi the picture is that the saints will be victorious. The saints will sing. The saints, uh, God is going to, uh, you know, the Bible said, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And so it's going to happen. Now watch, I'm. So we see that the uh, golden bowls symbolizes they symbolize the prayers of the saints. That's it's not you can't take it literally. Now watch this. Let's go to chapter six and verse nine. We're right there. You see, look at this. We did this before. And when he had broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had. Uh, maintained. And so is there a physical altar in the heavenly realm? No, it, it, no, it's not. So I have to go back to the old covenant to learn what's the picture here. You know, what, what does the altar mean? There's a picture that he wants us to see. If I take this literally, I'm going to miss the point. I can't take it literally. I can't. If I want to understand what he's saying, I cannot take it literally because I'm, I'm not going to understand it. See, look at 15 and verse five, watch. 15 and verse 5. After these things, I looked, and the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. And let me ask you a question. Okay? When I look at this, that now we talked about this last Wednesday and the Wednesday before that. We, used, we showed some scriptures that in the heavenly realm, it's all spiritual. No, There's nothing physical there. It's just not going to happen. It's all spiritual. Even uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, we're going to have spiritual bodies. Nothing physical enters the heavenly realm. It's all spiritual, all. And so when I read this, after these things, I looked in the temple of the tabernacle of testimony in heaven was open. So if I take this literally, that means in the heavenly realm, there's going to be a physical temple physical tabernacle in the heavenly realm. That's not going to happen. So I know I, if I take this literally, I'm going to miss the point. I can't take it literally. I have to find out what's the imagery here. What does he want me to see? What's the picture? So let's go back to 5.8. Revelation 5.8. And when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, having each one a harp 
and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So we just established, I cannot take this literally. So then what does it mean? Okay, I can't. Try to take it literally, you'll be stuck. It's just not, it's just not gonna happen. So this doesn't mean that I could, Revelation 5, 8, Revelation 14, 2, Revelation 15, 2, does not mean that I can disregard all the other scriptures and worship God along with those musical instruments, which are from the old covenant. And remember, we talked about that, that God, uh, they were allowed to do that because God required that. They were, they were, they just didn't do that, do it arbitrarily. God allowed them to do that. But we do not see that in the new covenant at all. Now, here's a question before I go on. It's very interesting to me. Choirs and, and, and uh, the worshiping with the, all types of instruments all over the new old covenant, all over. You could just God required that all over the place. But it's very interesting that now we're in the 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 that's all over the old covenant. I don't know if I said new covenant. If I did, I'm going to correct the old covenant. Now we're in the new covenant. We see nothing like that at all. That's why I read those scriptures at all. If we get to Revelation there, what we see though, when we see the the instruments, it's imagery. There's a picture being painted. So if God wanted that, why didn't he put it there? Somebody said to me, well, God didn't say, very interesting. Somebody said to me, we, we had a discussion. They obviously have been listening, looking at the, listening to the lessons so well, God did not, God did not say that. He didn't say we can't do that. You know, God, we don't see, but God didn't say don't do it. And I, and I, I say this, let's use logic here. If I send you to the store and I say, I want you to, I say, Alvin, I want you to go to the store, please, and get me a loaf of bread and some milk. I do not have to say, Alvin, don't give me any eggs. Don't get any candy, don't get any soda pop, don't get any bologna, don't get any cheese. I don't have to say that. I don't have to say that. See, that's not even logical. The fact that I say, I please, can you get me some, what I told him to get, that's, that's what he gets. So God doesn't have to, the fact that we, God tells us what to do, he doesn't have to say, it's not even logical. He doesn't have to say, you know, he said, this is what you do and this is what we do. You know, he doesn't have to say, well, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. No, the fact that he says that, that is what we do. Again, I, I, you know, you send your child to the store and you say, give me a loaf of bread. Do you have to tell them don't get any candy? They know. If they take your money and come back with uh, a loaf of bread and some sugar and some candy and some soda pop, they're in trouble. You don't have to tell them what not to get. The fact you tell them, told them what to do, that's it. And, that, and God is our God. He doesn't have to tell us what, what you know. There are things that we learn about the, in the Bible. This is what we don't do. But God, that's because we, you know, he, does, he didn't say don't do it. Well, he doesn't have to. The fact that he says do it, that's good enough. Okay. So let's, so let's, let's um, look at this picture. So we know it's not to be taken. Now watch this. We know it's not to be taken literally. Notice something here. I'm going to read verses 8 through 8, 9, and 10. Watch. And when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, having each one a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. Worthy art, this is a song. Worthy art thou to take the book and to break its seals. For thou was slain in this purchase for God with thy blood, men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. When I see that picture, that picture is Jesus Christ. That's the picture. And he purchased the church with his blood. That's the picture. See, he did it for God. Remember, uh, God sent his only begotten son, that was Christ, and we looked at Philippians, uh, the book of Philippians, uh, that was, uh, Christ did it because he wanted to. He wasn't forced to do that. He took upon flesh 
so he can sacrifice himself to save mankind to please the father so that's i look at this i read this imagery and i see the picture here see worthy are thou to take the book and to break its seal for thou was slain that's christ and this purchase for god that's the father with thy blood that's christ from every uh, from every tribe and tongue and people and nation for thou has made them to be kingdom and priest to our god and they will reign upon the earth and i have to you know that's another lesson i think i have to reign upon the earth i now have to get into what that is because i can't take that literally what's, what's the picture so notice um watch this so let's look at this picture here the 24 i'm not going to dwell on this the 24 l notice said and when he and when he had taken the book the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb having each one a harp and golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of the saints so these 24 elders had each one had uh, a harp and it's very now listen it's very interesting now and i want to say this i want you to get, grasp this because if you take it literally that means today everyone should have a harp everyone should have an instrument the bible says uh having each one a harp and golden bowls full of incense so that if i take it literally so that when i worship god on sunday uh, take them, everyone should have a musical instrument every person and then also the, the golden bowls need to be there too Okay, that's that's so watch this in second chronicles 24 and verse 1 through 30 i think it's 31 first chronicles read it for yourself that's the uh, the 24 positions in the priesthood that's there were 24 positions i believe david did that there were 24 different positions in the priesthood that's And so basically when you get that's that that was literally david did that in first chronicles 24. he established 24 positions in the priesthood that was the order so when you get here at 24 uh that is the the totality of the priesthood it represents the, the totality of the priesthood that's the priesthood so when i look at that and so i see that this imagery here this uh the victory belongs to this to priesthood see and it's a it's a it's a new song belongs to the priesthood because you, you see having each one a harp and golden bowls full of incense well who did that the priest did that the priest did that in the old covenant not just anybody the priest did that which are the prayer and so he, he's taking this image here he, he's taking this information from the old covenant Remember Romans 54, those things written before time were written for our learning, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. Those things were a copy, a shadow. A shadow leads to what we had to lead to something real. And we studied the passage, Romans chapter 7 in the Galatians. We studied several passages that were no longer old, under the old covenant. Jeremiah prophesied in Jeremiah 31 about the new covenant that's coming. The new covenant is here. So you see that. It, it, it represents now watch who has those i'm going to go to i'm going to i want you to hold your your uh, spot there and i'm going to show you something and whoever has first peter 2 5 first uh, revelation 1 6 first peter 2 9 and first corinthians 3 16 and 17. um i like you to read those when in a minute we're just uh, after this I, I, I like you to read those for me thank you but watch this watch this i want you to grasp this second chronic second chronicles uh five i'm gonna read verse 11. second chronicles five i'm gonna read verse 11. watch and when the priests came forth from the holy place and all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves with regard to divisions and all Levitical singers, Asaph, Haman, uh, Judathan, and their sons and kinsmen, clothes and fine linen with cymbals, harps, see, 
and liars standing east of the altar, and with them 120 priests blowing trumpets, priests blowing trumpets, in unison with the trumpets and the singers were uh, to make themselves heard with one voice to praise and to glorify the Lord. And when they had lifted up their voice, accompanied with trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, where they had praised the Lord saying, he indeed is good for his long suffering, his loving kindness, his everlasting. Then the house of the house of the Lord, then the house, the house of the Lord was filled with the cloud so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Now watch, let's go back. See, you see that in the old covenant. That's a shadow, it's leading to something. It's not, you know, the Romans 54, we learn, those things written for to written for learning. He was 10-1 and it's a copy of shadow. So notice how you see that here so the priest was, you see the priests involved in the worship and the instruments and et cetera. You see in, in, involved in the temple worship. Now watch, before I go here, uh, who has those scriptures? Um, I have First <clears throat> Peter 2, 5. Do you want 5 and 9 together or do you want to keep them separate? That's fine, that's perfect. Okay. You also, as living stones, are being built up as spiritual as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And then nine says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who has Revelation 1, 6 and 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17? Thank you, Troy. Revelation 1, 6. Mm -hmm. And made us a kingdom, priests to his, to his God and Father, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Sean. What about 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17? Uh, verse 16 says, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which the temple ye are. Thank you, Kyle. So we see here, it's very interesting, that that old covenant, the old priesthood, that was that set the tone, that was the example of who we are. That's, that's you know, we, we learn about what they did and how they did that. But now it's a spiritual priesthood. It's a spiritual temple. It's a spiritual priesthood. We are the church, the church. We are the priest today. Christ, according to the book of Hebrews, is the high priest. And we are the temple of God. So it's spiritual. You see, so when I look at this now, I, 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 I saw that in, in Second Chronicles chapter 5, that the priests, and you see that in other passages, is that the priests were doing these things. And and so, but notice here, as we look at this, well, I'm going to, now watch this. Think about we just those scriptures we just read. I'm going to read verse 8 again. Now watch, watch, I'm going to read verse 8, 9, and 10. Watch. And when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders, that's the priesthood, that's the church, that's us, fell down before the lamb, having the harps and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. See that? That's a, now what? And they sang a new song. The priesthood, the church. Who? They sang a new song. The priesthood, the church, the kingdom of God. They sang a new song. They were the faithful. And what they sing, worthy are thou to take the book and to break its seals, for thou wast slain and didst purchase for God with uh, thy blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And thou has made them to be a see that, and thou has made them to be a kingdom uh, and priest to our God, and they reigned and and they will reign upon the earth. So think about that. You see, in Second Chronicles five eleven to fourteen, that they were literally doing that. That's, and so I he could take that, and and put it in the image so I could understand that. It's like you saw the harps with the priests, 
and so he could take something literal and put it in the it. Now, if think about that, he takes something that literally happened and put it here in the image, and it serves as a metaphor, etc. Well, because I realized what happened literally, I can see the picture. I mean, he has to use things that I'm familiar with for me to get the picture. He can't use anything that I'm unfamiliar. I mean, if it's something I'm familiar familiar with, I'm not going to get the picture. And like when I study Revelation, I have to go back to the old covenant in order for me to get the picture. What Jesus said, uh, uh, the seed and the sower, etc. Well, they were familiar with that. He used something that is familiar with to make his point. Well, the thing about hell, which is uh, Gehenna, and and you know, he takes Gehenna, which was that smelly garbage dump in Jerusalem, and they kept the fire burning because that's where the dead bodies went, all the garbage went, the dead animals. That's where all that. It was a garbage dump, and he utilized that to explain hell. Because people were familiar with Gehenna, that place of torment. So there was a dead body, they threw it in there. If there was a uh, dead bodies of an animal, they, they threw it in there and the fire never went out. And there were maggots in there, the worms in there, just continuously. So he used something they were familiar with to, this, to help them understand hell. That's what he's doing here. So this is the priesthood. The priests, they are the ones who are going to sing this new song. But notice this, this new song. Notice in verse in verse 9, and they sang a new song saying. Now, I'm going to go to Isaiah. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 42, verse 8 and 9. Watch this. Isaiah 42, verse 8 and 9. Watch, watch how Isaiah utilizes this new song. He said, I am the Lord, that is, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things have come to pass. Now I declare new things before this day, they spring forth, I proclaim them to you. New, the former, see, the former things have come to pass. Now I declare new things. It's a new song, new things. In chapter 43, verse 18 and 19 of Isaiah. Do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Okay. So you see that in verse nine, and they sung a new song. And watch for watch this in chapter fourteen. Here you go again in chapter fourteen. Chapter fourteen. And you see in verse two, and I heard a voice from heaven like the sound of many waters, like the sound of loud thunder. And the voice which I heard was like the sound of the harpers playing on their harps. And they sang a new song. Okay. It's a song of victory. It's a song of triumph. It's a new song. And God's going to allow, God's going to do this because God's going to He's going to come down on the Roman Empire, and the Roman Empire is going to be punished, and God did do that. And the church, remember, Satan tried to destroy the church to uh, do the emperor. We studied that, but it didn't work. God showed his power. He said, this is going to happen, and it happened. And the church were able to sing a new song. Those former things were all going away because of God, because God did that. So that's what that's the image that God wants to see. Victory, 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 victory. And it's for the church. Let me let me show you this in, in uh, Revelation 15. I'm going to close. Revelation chapter 15. Uh, I'm going to read this, show you the victory. Now watch. In verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, uh, seven angels who had seven plagues, which are the last, because in them the wrath of God is finished. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had come are victorious from the beast and from the image and from the number of his name, standing on a sea of glass, holding harps of God. That's not what I want. Um, yeah, that's fine. But look at, look at, um, we don't have time to go into this right now, but in verse 18, eight go, verse eight goes into with the, um, the the temple filled with the smoke. But that's not what I want. Let's look. Let's close with this one. Revelation. I'm not gonna. We time is up. I'm not going to go to go, go to that right now. 
I want you to see in chapter 19 and verse 1. I'm going to read that quickly. And these things I heard, as it were, a loud voice, a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation, glory, and power belongs to our God, because his judgment are true and righteous and righteous, for he has judged the great harlot who was corrupting the earth with her immorality, and he has avenged the blood of his bond servants on her. And a, and a second time they said, Hallelujah, her smoke rises up forever and ever, for the twenty-four elders, that's a priesthood, and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God, who sits on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. That's the new song. Verse 6, the last part of verse 6, Hallelujah, for the Lord God the Almighty reigns. That's what it's talking about. It's a song of victory. The harps in heaven are symbolic. The harps are uh, symbolize a beautiful sound of the song that was being sung. That's basically, that's what it is. If anyone needs prayers tonight, please don't hesitate. Whatever you need, make yourself known that you've seen the song for the invitation.